Hello everyone and welcome back to Crypto Atlas. In today's video, I will be discussing Bitcoin, Ethereum, Orchid, AKOXT, and GRT, also known as the graph. And we do have some big news that came out with the graph, which I think is reflective of what happened in the price. So don't go anywhere. We actually got a ton of news in regards to Bitcoin, but a lot of it's been simplified down thanks to Twitter. Thank you so much, Twitter, for all that stuff. And so I think these videos are gonna be compiled a lot more neatly, especially if I can focus just on the nitty gritty of the things here. So if you guys are new to the channel, do not forget to hit subscribe for more cryptocurrency news and technical analysis. And I'm also getting involved with things in the stock market now too. So if you guys wanna check out some stuff, I plan on doing something later this evening on AMC and the GameStop situation. I might look into some other stocks as well. So hopefully those are gonna be much shorter type videos, but yeah, we got a lot of stuff that we're doing on this channel now in the world of like financial situations. Just so you guys know, I'm not a financial advisor. So please do not ask me directly what you should or should not invest in. What I'm sharing with you guys is my own opinion, my own technical analysis. I'm sharing the news with you guys and we're trying to build a nice community here. So if you guys are new, once again, don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up like button. Let's try and get this video to at least 100 likes. Click on the bell icon as well so we can have you guys get notified whenever we have a new video because YouTube's been really bad about that, especially lately. And let me know what you guys think of this stuff in the comments down below. So normally I actually record these videos right around the time when the new candle position is happening. But just like a quick little FYI for you guys, I made my own game. Um, I've been working on this for like four months now. It's a Roblox game. I did a couple live streams on my other channel. And long story short, I think we worked out the bugs and everything. I got to test it again with the people on that live stream and uh, hopefully start promoting it. So I need to have a little bit more time today to be able to do that. So we're not doing it at 4 p.m. It's actually 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time as of the time of me recording this video. Getting ready to go on another one hour candle here in just a minute. We'll see how that last one hour plays. But typically this makes its big move on the new daily candle position. So I'll talk about the chart here in just a second. Let's go ahead and focus on what's going on in the news first. So over on the news side, a couple interesting things right here. Let's go ahead and scroll on up for this. And let's get you guys right here. If you guys want to check me out, I'm on Twitter at Atlas Official TV. My name's in the bottom left-hand side there. So Michael Saylor actually bought more Bitcoin in addition to the Bitcoin that he literally just bought. So this is new. MicroStrategy has purchased an additional 328 Bitcoins for $15 million in cash at an average price of $45,710 per Bitcoin. As of Jan uh, sorry, as of March 1st, 2021, we hodl 90,859 Bitcoins acquired for $2.186 billion at an average price of $24,063 per Bitcoin. This guy is a beast. He's even got his laser eyes in his picture. I love it. Next up. From Jurian Timmer, he says, Bitcoin, in my view, Bitcoin has evolved to the point that it could be treated as a form of digital gold, a possible counterweight to future monetary inflation, my current take on the cryptocurrency here. And then he includes a link to it as well. And you guys can see there's been a ton of people that are showing their support for this gentleman's perspective view on this. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that Bitcoin is a new digital gold? I think so, that's my opinion. Michael Saylor, once again, with a repost of something in regards to Citibank, right? So all truth passes through three stages. First, it is ridiculed. Second, it is violently opposed. Third, it is accepted as being self-evident. Citigroup on Schopenhauer uh, on Bitcoin. I think that's how you pronounce that. So Bitcoin could become the currency of choice for international trade. That's a remark made from Citibank, which is great. $43,000 all-time high. People say, yeah, it's over. It's too late. 43000 dip. It's over. Bitcoin's dead. Human psychology is a beautiful thing. I totally agree with you on this, Gigi. And then we got Tyler Rinkelvoss. He said, uh, well, he's actually reposting this. Mr. Wonderful has invested 3% of his portfolio into Bitcoin. This is huge because Mr. Wonderful actually had said before that he would never do anything with Bitcoin. He was on the news, on record, on video, and he said it, right? He's like, I will never do anything with it. And then here we are, a couple years later, and he's in it. He just put 3%, and he was talking about the idea that maybe he'd go up to 5%, but the biggest thing that was scared him away was the volatility of Bitcoin, but now he's gotten used to the idea of the volatility with Bitcoin. I mean, it still keeps going up, so I guess he feels a little more safe with his investments on this, right? 
Uh, Bitcoin is at a tipping point and could become currency of choice for global trade, Citibank says. That's what we just talked about a second ago. They got a 108-page report on Bitcoin. <laughs> Absolutely amazing here, right? Goldman will trade Bitcoin futures and non-deliverable forward uh, sorry, Goldman will trade Bitcoin futures and non-deliverable forwards for clients from next week source. That's pretty darn good. If that can be totally validated, that's going to be some good news right there. Heck yeah, buddy. We got all kinds of good news going on. This is also interesting. In the world of NFTs, another post shared by Tyler Winklevoss. In less than 20 minutes, Grimes or Grimms, I'm not sure how you say that, made over $5.8 million on her NFTs sold on Nifty Gateway. Congratulations. Absolutely amazing. Now, I actually took a look at some of her art in the article that was there. It's really good. I know some people are, you know, like, oh, she's already famous. Oh, she's the girlfriend of Elon Musk. That's why she made all this money and the rich just get richer. Okay. But actually go take a moment and go look at the art. An average person cannot go and just make the art that she did. This stuff is highly detailed, great lighting, even the ones that are actually uh, animated and, and the movement of them, the music score places over it really well. She keeps a consistent theme to her work. I'm thoroughly impressed with it as an artwork. So disregard all of that. If you didn't know that she was related to Elon Musk, anything, if you just looked at the art, be like, wow, somebody paid $5.8 million for this NFT series. And I mean, it looks good. It's not like it's just paint thrown on a piece of paper or whatever, right? Um, which, you know, some people say that that's really good art too. But this obviously requires a lot more effort. Let's just be honest with that, right? So I think that's actually absolutely amazing. And I got a quick little announcement I want to share with you guys. I have been working diligently on my own NFT series. I just started it. I figured out my theme. And I think you guys are going to be really impressed. So I will be officially announcing and revealing what this NFT series is when Bitcoin hits $1 trillion again. And there's a reason behind that. But if you guys want to keep tuned in and figure out uh, or hear what it is that I have to reveal when the time comes with this, I'm really excited. And especially in the world of cryptocurrency, I think I've created something that is like, really fitting in well <laughs> with the world of art and with crypto so like i'm telling you guys i'm super excited and i hope you guys like it when i do share it with you art is still subjective in the end i'm not super famous i don't know if it's going to really trend well with people but i've put so much work into this and the backstory behind it and and you'll you'll have to see anyways i'm not trying to deter you guys too much from what's actually going on in the crypto verse with this news and stuff. Am I pointing the wrong way? Yeah, I'm doing the wrong way. Sorry, I gotta do mirrored, my bad. Uh, and so for the graph, we do have some new major news with this. The graph now supports Phantom Network. Phantom Network joins the list of layer one blockchains in the graph that's uh, it, supporting, right? So this is amazing news. Look, they shared this over on Twitter and it goes on as far as like what it is for this partnership, how it works. The partnership, apart from exposing phantom developers to the Graph Foundation grants, will also create an enabling environment for them to learn about subgraphs. Interestingly, the indexing platform will also support phantom subgraphs. The Graph already supports both Ethereum and POA. The addition of phantom subgraphs implies that phantom developers will be able to cross-swap between Ethereum and other supported blockchains. As previously stated, the inclusion of Phantom Network as a Layer 1 blockchain on the graph was fast-tracked. The entire process took place in about 24 hours. Andre Kronge announced the collaboration alongside the entire integration process on Twitter. He also pointed out that the timely integration was due to the graph's top-notch UX slash UI design. Shortly after the integration, it was possible for developers with decentralized apps on Ethereum to launch them on Phantom. Subsequently, bridging the gap between both platforms and also increasing data interoperability among the platforms. With the partnership, Phantom community members will be eligible to receive the Graph Foundation grants. The platform has thrown its doors wide open and asked developers, community members, researchers, etc. to apply for grants. Interested developers can apply for the GRT grants here. And then they include a link. This is through altcoin buzz uh, slash cryptocurrency news, just so you guys know. 
blockchain interoperability via subgraphs. One major aspect of the blockchain sphere is the move toward a decentralized internet, which will entail the move from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0 as more use cases are brought to life in the blockchain and crypto space, more scalability and interoperability based issues are expected to rise. The increase in non-fungible tokens or NFTs, we were just now talking about this a minute ago, right? And decentralized finance or dApps, uh, the applications with them and projects have furthermore accentuated the need for blockchain interoperability. The graph has, however, propounded a solution to increase blockchain interoperability via its subgraphs. So really good news on the graph side, right? Looking forward to what they got going on next with this. All right, so we are 52 minutes away from the daily candle close. Let's go look at this bad boy real quick on the monthly side. So ignore this purple line that you guys see. That's actually something I used as a forecast from before. But we have had some bullish months indeed, ladies and gentlemen. One, two, three, four, five months of closure in the green, right? Five in a row. And one of them, the first one, the volume wasn't even something all that great to write home about. It just happened to be mostly in one direction. And so we've seen an upsurge in volume right here quite exponentially a bit of a drop down but it was still quite high for last month and now we're at a brand new position and already in one day so far we're making a nice little dent on that full chart now how the rest of the month's going to play out could totally be different right but as far as looking at it from a monthly side things are looking really good the only concern that i have is the fact that we have so many months in a row that are green and we don't have any cool down type period really going on that much we did have it like the last week Sure, but as far as for a month side perspective, we don't really see much of that going on. And back in 2017, when it was on its run towards the uh, $20,000 right here, if we zoom in just a bit, you guys can actually see that we have consecutively of green candles, one, two, three, four, five candles in a row of months. They were all green before there was some pullback and then a further continuation of three more months and when it hit its actual full-time high, right? And there's a lot of people saying that we still have plenty of time. We're still good to go. You get four on this big run up before we decided to have some pullback as well. And so on our point right now, remember one, two, three, four, five. So in a sense, we're already kind of overextending ourselves here as far as for these big pushes up without having some pullback. That's a little bit of a call for concern, but you got to remember too, that we're in different circumstances than we were in 2017 and 2018. I've talked about this a lot of different times. Right now we're being led by the financial institutions. Whereas back in 2017, 2018, it was mainly the retail investors. So the big players, the big whales, the guys that come in and they drop a million dollars, $5 million, a billion dollars, right? They're able to make a huge impact. And compared to 2017, the rate of production is cut down. We also have Square purchasing lots of Bitcoin, PayPal purchasing lots of Bitcoin, Grayscale buying lots of Bitcoin. You have other billionaires and people that are buying over the counter you can't really get over the counter now and on top of it too the miners just recently what did they decide to do guys they decided to stop selling they're holding on to it for a little bit how long is a good question but if they don't sell and they're okay with taking those losses because they still got to pay all their bills right but if they hold on guys you better hold on too because the only Bitcoin people are going to be able to buy are the ones that are going to be really list realistically through the exchange. And if people are pulling all their crypto off the exchanges, what do you think is going to happen? Boom! The price is going to go super parabolic because tons of people want it. It's looking like it's running out. Nobody wants to sell it. And the price is going higher and higher and higher. And there's that FOMO, right? So things right now are getting super interesting. And it could change. The narrative could change, right? With the news, something could come out that we weren't expecting. And that's why you should try to be prepared. So I, I don't like to go too far out on the scale when I do my forecasts on things. I try to keep things more realistic on like a daily perspective. Where do we think it could go next? And play it as a day-by-day -day basis, right? Long-term, yeah, we could hit $100,000 this year. Long-term, we could hit $384,000 before the having market ends. I think I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> oh, yeah, I can feel that. Sorry. 
All right. Let's go and take a look at the chart here. $49,300 approximately, right? Looking really good. We are probably going to close out pretty close to the $50,000 mark. Now, I don't know if we're actually going to be able to reach it. It's already been pretty overextended for the day. So if we do hit $50,000 on the new daily candle position, I have a feeling that it is going to pull back a bit before it has a further continuation on, right? The great news is we got quite a bit of room here before this last hour ends for us to close above the 21 EMA. That signifies that we might be done with that little bear market trend that was formed on the 21 EMA, basically only one extra day on that extension of that pattern uh, being established, right? And that means that we could be very well on the back, on the track to being in a bull market again. Now, the call for concern is this could be a fake out. You could have a big push up like this and then a pump and dump situation. People start retracing back and then we go right back below the 21 EMA and then it continues on with that, right? And people just use this as like a one day opportunity kind of thing. I don't think that's going to necessarily be the case, but we do need to be cautious with things. So let's go ahead and look at where we need to break through first and then we'll take a look at going on the bottom. $50,000, break above that, key psychological level. Next level, $52,670, break above that. Then we've got all the way up to $57,700. Getting above that, we can then tap the all-time high at $58,436 before passing it and reaching a new all-time high. That's gonna be absolutely awesome if we can manage to do that. We got all the way up to this purple line, which is based on an old trend, but that was on the run, trying to see where it could go with this first initial push back in December towards $100,000. And what's interesting is the base of this is right on the Fibonacci sequence, right? So that would put it at $65,154. If we can get to that point again, which we did tap off of the bottom of one of these back on February 9th, so I do think it is possible, um, then we could very well hit the $100,000 mark with what I have on this previous trend, which is like right around in, uh, I gotta, snuffle in my nose or whatever you want to call it right there uh why is it not showing it now there we go that was weird it wasn't wanting to move so it's like right around april or so yeah you're looking like towards the end of april period if it can manage to hit around that then amazing right um and then if this decides and it wants to go down let's go ahead and factor in some of those other key levels right here so on the way down we do have some support being formed at forty nine thousand dollars. the 21 ema of course which is at like forty seven thousand six hundred forty three dollars excuse me Sorry about that, guys. And then uh, further continuation down will be at $47,000. And then a long shot drop, quite substantial, would be pulling us all the way down to $40,000 realistically. I mean, the Fibonacci sequence is at like $40,700. So you might see a little bit of a bounce there. But I think a lot of people probably would end up letting it drop pretty close to the $40,000 range. Um, that'd be a quite a big reversal from what we had today. But overall, on the daily candle, the volume a little bit higher than what it was yesterday, which is kind of surprising because we had a lot of good news going on today. And yeah, so overall, things are looking quite bullish for Bitcoin. We are still overall forming into a long uptrend a continuation pattern right here, right? We have never invalidated our lower lows, right? So there's nothing to say that we can't keep the same trajectory going on. The RSI is also rising a little bit. Technical radar says buy as well. Let's go and take a look at some of these other cryptocurrencies. And whoops, I didn't mean to do that. And I'm gonna try and run through these pretty quickly. I, I meant to make this video a little shorter and I went on a rant. So I apologize about that, guys. Now, if Bitcoin decides and wants to go up, 1500 Right now, we got to hit the 21 EMA. That's going to be at $1,627. Another level at $1,700. Then $1,750 is going to be big. And then beyond that, we got one like a $1,975, $2,000 range. Gosh, man, I sneeze and then my nose starts to get a little bit runny. And then uh, we go up to $2,040. $2,040, we go above that, we get price discovery zone. Sky is the limit, right? So we got some layers that we got to try and break through for sure, but... The fact that we're about to close above $1,500 again is a very good sign. The fact that we're still below the 21 MA, not great, but, you know, we're getting there. If this size it wants to drop down, we have $1,426 as a level of support. A further level drop down below that is going to be at $1,284. The RSI is still below the 50 range, right? So we get plenty of room to grow with Ethereum. If people were looking for a barrier of entry to try and get on something like this, this is looking really good. It's at almost 10% for the daily gain, which is a nice little pullback, don't get me wrong. Um, but we have so much room to still move to get back to the previous all-time highs on this. 
So things are looking very, very good for that. Now looking over at Orchid. Orchid is at sub 50 cents still, but it is in the green position. Looking like it's more than likely going to close out on the daily candle below the 21 MA. Still suggesting that bearish pattern but it looks like we're about to swing out of that and start to have a full-on recovery right holding above if it can manage to close out above the 48 cent on the fibonacci sequence then absolutely amazing we do see a pretty close bounce here not quite but pretty close on the 21 ma at 51 cents still look to see some resistance against that guys if bitcoin and ethereum start to move and rally really well on the new daily candle position for tomorrow which I kind of have a feeling that it will. I, I look at the charts all the time, and yeah, it looks like it's overextended on the daily, but there's not a ton of volume that really happened yesterday, and there's a lot of good news, guys. So I would not be surprised, honestly, in my opinion, if Bitcoin starts to rally up more. And I think that if it does on Ethereum moves, that this is going to be tapping against the 51 cent range, and I have a feeling that it will probably break above and might hold right around 55 cents. This is, again, this part I'm telling you guys right now is just my gut feeling, right? But as far as the actual levels that we need to break above, let's focus on that for now. 51 cents, we got to break above that. Another level is going to be showing resistance at 58 cents, a further continuation up above that. We're going to have it at 68 cents, and then a level at the uh, 79 cents. Above that, we, we got pretty much clear room up towards the dollar range, but you know we gotta get it step by step, right? If this decides and wants to go down, we have support at 48 cents. For the level drop down below that, we got it 43 cents, eh, basically 44 cents. And then a significant drop would pull it all the way down to 35 cents or 0.3568 respectively. Now, the last one we're gonna take a look at for the day is the graph. And the graph is off. Ooh, baby. Breaking above the 21 EMA. That's what I like to see. This thing is looking good. It's at $1.88 right now. Even on the daily candle position, it looks like it's trying to test forming a daily high for the closure. So that's looking really, really good right there. And the volume, just like I was kind of explaining with the other stuff, it's very low. So that I do have a concern with as far as an altcoin goes, because typically with an altcoin, especially if it has a lower market cap, this is where the manipulation comes in and the pullbacks tend to be pretty hard, right? So if we close out here and there is a sell-off, I'd be looking at about a 50% average return pullback on something like this, because doing so, especially with this, would more than likely push it right around the 21 MA. We're looking at it like $1.74 or so, for that price point but right now it is rallying it is doing really good it has that recent news it could keep going more don't get me wrong but i'm just saying there's not a whole bunch of volume with this that does concern me a little bit for the alt kind uh, the altcoin side okay that's all i'm saying um now if you zoom out you can actually see that we have other days that were much more substantial so by comparison is this really something that's all that crazy no, and we've seen it actually have multiple days. We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days in a row of green candles, and two of which were extreme high volumes, one of which was a pullback, but it still ended out in the green. So I think this has good signs. We still have a previous high at about just under $3 here, at like $2.90, what is that, like $2.92 or so. So things are looking really, really good, right? And uh, yeah, realistically, let's see why I got that up that way. Let's go ahead and get this flipped around just like that that looks good right there i would say uh ooh, look at that it actually fits right in within the gap <laughs> uh, glad i fixed that Jeez. okay so um getting above a dollar 98 we got two dollars and 28 cents as the next major level and then pushing all the way up to two dollars and 91 cents breaking above that realistically we're going to see a test for three dollars and i think that could end up happening in the next couple days right this is rallying really well. And then if this decides it wants to go down, the 21 EMA, we got $1.75. Further drop down below that, we got support at $1.59. And then a further, further level drop down below that would be at $1.28. The, we got to see some volume shift here too, guys, because overall this thing has been, you know, progressively down. It needs to start swinging up into the opposite direction. I have a feeling if it's going to be a green candle, like right here, then this is going to also increase its price. And we're going to be pushing up close towards this range once again, right? There's my nice little drawing there for you guys. The RSI is not overbought. We're a little bit over the average zone. So we still got plenty of room. And the technical radar says that we have a, str uh, not a strong buy. We're on a buy, right? Okay. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode, guys. 
Sorry, I made it a little bit longer than what I intended. I always try to make these things a little bit shorter, and then next thing I know, I make them a little bit longer. But I am trying to improve every day on this stuff. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I got links in the description for everything. If you guys want to sign up with Coinbase, you've never invested in crypto before, there's a referral thing there. If you want to stake and earn an interest, I've been using BlockFi, and there's a link referral in there for you guys as well. And also I got stuff for stocks like Weeble. There's a referral there. There's one for Robinhood. But I like Weeble more personally, especially with all the shenanigans that happened recently with Robinhood, right? So if you guys want to use those, cool. If you don't want to, okay. But thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up like button as well. Let's try and get this video to at least 100 likes. Click the bell icon so you know whenever we have a new video. And... Drop a comment. Say hi. I don't care. You know, talk about the crypto. Thanks, guys. And I will see you in the next episode.